Today, we're going to be taking a look at an audio feature that's actually been in Unreal Engine for years. But if you've never had the opportunity to work on a larger scale project that has hundreds or even thousands of sounds playing, then this might be something that you've overlooked. So in this video, we're going to be talking about sound concurrency. So to help us out with this, let's set up a hypothetical scenario. You've been hired as the technical sound designer to work on a multiplayer battle royale type game. And so in that game, you're going to have a player. And on that player, you're going to need some weapons. Now, I'm not giving the player actual weapons. I'm just giving them uh, the sound of weapons, but that'll be sufficient for this tutorial. So on this player, I have a meta sound and that meta sound looks like this. Uh, because these aren't actually NPCs that are gonna be running around, um, I've got my wave player getting random. I've got some random machine gun sounds here. And then I just have some logic set up to essentially randomly spawn this machine gun sound between two and four seconds. Um, but by itself, sounds like this. And so we've got our machine gun sound here. And since the player is gonna be running around, well, we're also gonna need some footstep sounds. And just like with our machine gun, if I open up our footstep meta sound, you'll see that I have pretty much the same thing, except this spawns a new footstep sound every half to one second. So not how you would have it set up in an actual game, but for tutorial purposes, it does exactly what I need to do. So we've got a player, we have some gunshot sounds, and we have some footsteps. But now the question is, what happens if this player invites 99 of their friends? So now I have 99 NPCs here, or players, and each one of them, has that same meta sound for the machine gun and has the same meta sound for the footsteps. And so I'm sure you're probably wondering, well, what does this sound like? Well, wait a minute. I have a hundred gunshots and a hundred footsteps. I'm not hearing any gunshots. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And if we slide over to our audio insights tool, uh, which this is available as of 5.4, uh, if you're is using an older version of Unreal Engine, the tutorial is still relevant. However, you won't have access to the audio. Uh, but if we look at our audio insights tool here, uh, you can see that, well, yep, all we definitely heard was footsteps. And also, if we were to count all of these, there's not a hundred here. In fact, without even counting, I can tell you that there's only 32 here. And the reason that I know that is because if we go into our project settings and we do a search for max channel, you'll see that by default, Unreal Engine will only allow you to have 32 channels of audio. So basically what this means is after 32 channels have been hit, no other sounds are going to be spawned in. And so you might be thinking, okay, well, if I've got 100 footstep sounds and 100 gunshot sounds, why don't I just change this to 200 so that everything plays? And I will tell you right now, this is an absolutely terrible idea, and I'll show you why. So I've set that to 200, and so now all 200 of my gunshots and, or all 100 of my gunshots and all 100 of my footstep sounds are going to play. And that's about as close to white noise as you can possibly get without using white noise. And if we come over and look at our audio insights, uh, we can actually scroll down now and see that 
all 100 of my our machine guns and all 100 of our footsteps are playing. But this sounds like absolute garbage. And so that's not really the the right way to go because even though we increased it to 200, now what happens if we add anything else to here? So say the player has some armor on, you're gonna hear that cloth fully. They're doing things like handling the weapon and reload. So you've got the weapon fully. And then we can also add in, I've got nine explosions, not to mention, we also need some music and ambience. So in total, um, I have 211 audio actors, and this could get exponentially larger. So, you know, say that you have things like vehicles or items that you pick up and you need some type of auditory feedback, letting the player know that they picked that up. There's NPCs, so there might be dialogue. You've got the different, like I mentioned, the clothing foley, the weapon foley, you know, this is just going to compound on itself and become exponentially more of a problem. So instead of setting our max channels to something higher, that's where we're gonna start using sound concurrency. So I'm gonna go back into our project settings, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down to 32, which is what it is at default. And so we can come into our content browser, and I've already got folders set up for each of my different sounds. And for things that happen a lot, and there are a lot of them, so my explosions, my footsteps, my machine guns, I'm gonna make sound concurrencies for those. You can make sound concurrencies for things like ambience and music, but most likely you're gonna be handling those in a different way, whether it's tags or audio volumes or you know whatever the case may be. Uh, you're gonna have probably have a lot less ambience and music than you are things like footsteps and gunshots. So the way that we create a sound concurrency is we can right click in our content browser and we can come under audio and you'll find sound concurrency here, or you can just start typing concurrency and it'll pop up for you. Now, because this has been in Unreal Engine for years, there's no plugin that you have to go in and enable to get this to work. It is just there by default. Now you can name this whatever you want. Uh, I personally like to use SCC for sound concurrency, uh, underscore whatever it is. So for this one, I'm going to call it machine guns. And we can go ahead and open this up. Now there's several options in here, uh, but I'll be completely honest in this video, I'm really only going to be focusing on max count and the resolution rule. Those are the two main options that we need out of here. You're more than welcome to go through and play with some of these others. And if you want to know what they are, uh, you can mouse over them and the tooltip will explain it. But like I said, we're only going to be really focusing on max count and the resolution rule because those are the main things that are going to govern our sound concurrency. So max count may seem self-explanatory uh, by default. is It is set to 16. And so what this is going to do is, since I'm making this specifically for my gunshots, even though by default in my project settings, the sound concurrency is capped at 32, I am specifically going to cap machine guns at whatever I set this value to. I'm not going to waste your time with a demonstration. I'll tell you right now, 16, way too many. Uh, so I'm actually going to drop this down to four. Now, the thing that we need to do from here is we need to figure out how or what law we're using to decide which four get to stay and cut the other 96 sounds out. And that's going to be our resolution rule. So if we click on this drop down, you're going to see that there's quite a few options here, uh, such as prevent new, which means once we hit four, no new sounds are going to get added. Uh, we can stop the oldest. So once we hit five, whichever one is the oldest is going to get cut to make way 
for that fifth sound so that we stay within our four sound limit. Now, because I'm using attenuation for things like gunshots and footsteps, the default stop furthest than oldest really makes a lot of sense because with attenuation, the furthest one is also gonna be the quietest. Uh, and if we happen to have two sounds that are the same distance away from the player, whichever one is the oldest is then gonna get cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that default. I'll save this and I'm gonna open up my machine gun meta sound again. And if we click on source up here at the top and we go down under our details panel, you will find a spot for concurrency. Now there's a couple things here. Uh, we can set our concurrency, uh, which I'm going to do because we've already made that uh, sound concurrency. However, if I wanted, I could actually override this and come down to the concurrency overrides and you'll see all of those options again. Uh, but since I already made that, I want to use the one that I made. And so we'll go ahead and save that. So I've added that sound concurrency. And now uh, let me make sure that my data layers aren't going to do something stupid. I'm going to set my data layers to only have our characters and the machine gun sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on this. And now if we pause this and head back over to our audio insights, you can see that now I only have four machine guns playing. And so that's gonna take up a max channel count of four. And because my global count cap is 32, that means I still have 28 other sounds that I can play. So let's keep going. Let's, we did that for the, the machine guns. And so I'm going to do the same thing for our footsteps and I'm going to limit those to four as well. So instead of creating a new sound concurrency, I can just right click on this and duplicate it. And I'll change this to SCC underscore footstep. And if I go into my footsteps meta sound, I can come over here and now I can add my SCC underscore footsteps this so it's not going to limit all of my sounds to only have four it's going to li limit specifically footsteps to four and additionally machine guns to four so i'm going to go ahead and save this and in my data layers i go ahead and set my footstep sounds to active well and hit play And so now if I pause this, the footsteps might have been a little hard to hear because of the gunshots. But if we look at our audio insights, now I have eight sounds playing. Four of them are footsteps. Four of them are machine guns. And so I'm going to do the same thing um, again for my explosions. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this out. And we'll call this one explosions. And for this one, even though I have nine sounds where those explosions could spawn, I'm actually going to cap this at two. And we'll make sure that the explosions are now enabled in my data layers. And we'll hit play. And so now I have a total of 10 sounds that are playing, even though I have 100 people. And you can start to hear how it's, it's very much a less is more type of situation. If I were to have all nine of my explosions going, all 100 of my footsteps, all 100 of my machine guns, you wouldn't be able to decipher 
anything. But now that we've limited that to the four closest footsteps, the four closest gunshots, and the two closest explosions, this is going to still allow it to sound like there's a large battle going on, but you're going to be able to, to decipher that audio information a lot better. And so now, just to round things off, I'm going to go ahead and add in our ambience and our music. And so we're taking, like I said, there are 211 sound actors in this environment. And because of sound concurrency, I'm going to be able to clearly hear everything. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap things up for this video. Hopefully you found it informative. Sound concurrency is an amazing tool, uh, especially if you're working on larger projects that have the potential to have hundreds or thousands of sounds active at one time, uh, just to really kind of save your audience's ears and you're not just blasting them with a wall of sound. Like I said, less is more. So if you guys like what you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. Until next time.